Hi, today I'm going to be talking to a very special guest of mine and a good friend. With, uh, he is a fabulous lead guitarist for bands like Hush and 3.2 with Robert Berry and, um, and also Fossil Bay Area. I'd like to welcome Paul Keller. Hi, Hi Paul. Hello. How's, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. And how are you? I'm great. Thanks. Uh, you, how are you doing with you, all those guitars we talked about before? Oh, you know, every day it's a it's a it's a challenge of trying to figure out what to do next, whether to buy a new new one or whether to sell one. I I I uh, I had one that I was ready to sell about a year ago, and uh, my daughter stepped in and said, "No, you can't sell that guitar." And I said, "Why not?" She goes, "Well, you know, you'll be leaving that for me when you're dead." <laughs> So, Girls are so honest. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was, it was like, ouch. <laughs> really, right? That's what you want to hear. <laughs> and, you know, and um, I'm just thinking back, too, that you had started playing and taught yourself when you were around 14. When, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, when, when I was 12 years old, my I lived in um, upstate New York and my dad worked for IBM and he came home one night and said, uh, IBM is transferring us to Los Angeles. And, um, you know, we all, we all decided that that would be a great, a great future for, for us. So um, we moved to LA. We uh, lived in a motel for about three weeks while my mom and dad were looking for a house and they eventually settled on a house in the, the Western San Fernando Valley. So we lived in Woodland Hills uh, for six years. And the neighborhood I lived in, um, I started meeting some of the neighborhood kids and three or four of them uh, played guitar and they started inviting me up to uh, their house to do these jams. And I didn't know what I was doing. I just sat there and I'd watch them for a while. And eventually it, it, it kind of took, I decided that that's, kind of what I wanted to pursue. So um, I'm still friends with those guys today. And uh, um, one of them has actually become quite an accomplished finger style guitar player. He has a has a really uh, active YouTube channel where he, I, I don't know where he finds the time, but he posts a lot of stuff. And uh, I wish I could remember the YouTube uh, handle. I think it's, I think his YouTube handle is thinking dog six um okay he's fabulous yeah i'll have to check that out for sure because i'm always interested in really good musicians you know yeah okay and um let's see so you started playing and you self-taught yeah i uh i'd sit in my bedroom with records and i'd try to pick up what was on the records and um i eventually met um a couple of people in my church who had a had a little folk group and they asked me to be part of their folk group so we uh we started playing you know coffee houses and stuff around the the los angeles area and that's pretty much where i got my first experience with actual performance um I missed that. it was it was great you know uh, one of the three was a, a female singer with with just an absolutely beautiful voice and we were doing uh, Judy Collins and um, Joni Mitchell stuff, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, and it was it was really cool. So, that sounds wonderful. That sounds absolutely fabulous. What a way to get started. Yeah. And I understand uh, that you had a couple of bands that you got introduced to, and bands in the sense of not local bands, but big bands that kind of got you into the prog world. Like, yeah. uh, why don't you why don't you tell us what bands you uh, you got galvanized to? Well, after I after I graduated from high school, um, I moved to Northern California, the the San Jose area, and you know I started uh, trying to meet people up here. I was going to a junior college. I met a few people, but um, I stayed in touch with my LA friends, and you know my LA friends back then we were we were kind of into 
you know, James Taylor and Cream and um, just a lot of the music of the 60s. Sure. Um, and after I moved up here, I was starting to get more into, uh, you know, Americana stuff like Crosby, Stills, Nash, Neil Young. And I ended up uh, talking to one of my old friends about two years after I moved here. And he said, oh, yeah, all that stuff's great. But you should check out this guy named Steve Howe with this band called Yes. And yes. I said, oh, <laughs> cool. well, I've, I've heard Roundabout. And he goes, yeah, they have a lot more stuff than just Roundabout. And so I actually went to see them at Winterland in 1973. And they kind of blew my mind and, and it totally changed my um, my approach towards guitar. Like, I, I want to kind of learn this stuff. Yes. And, you know, we were probably at that concert together because um, I was at Rareland to see Yes back that, in the day. That was such a great venue. It was Wasn't just, it, though? Yeah. First choir was on fire. It was yes. so good. Oh, man. Yeah. I loved Winterland. That was a great place to see uh, good music and as well as some of the other places in the Bay Area too. Yeah, yeah, we, we, had, a, we had so many places uh, to, to see music and, and actually when, when I started playing in bands in this area, there were so many places for bands to, to play. Uh, you know, you could, get a, you could get a six night a week gig somewhere or you could get you know, one night stands in various places, but there there was always live music in, in this area. It was, I, I remember very well. I grew up in Sunnyvale, you grew up in San Jose. So, you know, we, we haunted the same places for sure. And yes. uh, it, it was nonstop music, it really was. I thought the seventies was the absolute greatest period of time for music. Oh, it was It was so good. It was, there was never a bad band. It just wasn't, or a bad song. I mean, everything that was played was just first class. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Um, and now you have been in a few bands. And your first band was what? My first real rock band was Hush. Um, I, uh, I used to hang out at this local music store. Whenever I was bored, I'd drive down to this store called Guitar Showcase. And I got friendly with a sales guy there named Jack Van Breen, who's also a really great guitar player. And, um, you know, I talked to him, talked to him about music. Um, I'd pick up guitars and do like young people do. They'd turn up the amp and they'd play the thing that they just learned trying to impress other people in the store, you know, um, and you're not impressing anybody, but, you know, <laughs> um, but one time, one day he walked up to me and he said, Hey, Paul, there's this band that's looking for a guitar player that I think you, you might, you might be a good fit. And so I said, Oh, wow. I don't know if I'm ready for that, but I, I took the number, I called the number, um, and it turned out to be the band Hush. The, the guy I talked to was Gene Peralt, the bass player. And uh, he set up an audition time. I drove up in my Volkswagen van. Um, I was kind of a hippie back then. <laughs> so, um, Who wasn't back then though, you know? We oh, all wore those. The jeans that had the scrappy ends behind oh, the heels yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you'd 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 like cut the seams of the jeans, and then oh, you yeah. put, oh, yeah. put like paisley material to make <laughs> sort of bell bottoms out of it. I remember that so well. And um, Dr. Scholl's foot, uh, uh, the shoes that were like flip flops, but every girl had them. Oh yes, every, yeah. every girl had those. I mean, I, I could I I think about those. Uh, the styles back then, I absolutely still love them. I think they're great. <laughs> but, I, um, but my, uh, you know, I, I got out, I unloaded my, my equipment into the garage. And I think at that time, the only equipment I had was a Fender Telecaster, uh, a Fender Twin Reverb amplifier, which is probably 95 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a, I had a fuzz pedal. And um, 
So I didn't know anything about just getting a natural tone out of an amplifier. I just, I just thought you connect the fuzz pedal and you get a little bit of distortion when actually, you know, a lot of people use fuzz now and they use it real creatively, but back then it, it sounded really bad. Um, but they had me set up, they talked to me for a bit. Um, and they said, well, you know, what, what do you know that we play? And Gene had given me kind of a list of songs. And I think one of the songs was Roundabout. So um, I played, I played Roundabout for them. Um, probably didn't do it great, but I think I, you know, I, I sort of passed. And then he said, well, we also do, you know, we play a lot of high school. So we do a lot of dance material. Um, you know, do you know Brown Sugar by the Stones? And it's like, Oh, wow. I, I don't know anything by the stones. <laughs> goes, well, you know, if you were to get this, this job, um, you'd need to learn that stuff. And we played a few other things. We talked for a while, seemed to get along good personal personality wise. And then I, I said, well, thanks a lot. I went home and I didn't, you know, I thought, well, that was a good experience. I don't think anything's going to come out of this. Besides, I got an application in UCLA, and um, you know, so I was planning on going from a two-year college to a four-year college. And about four months later, in August of 1974, my phone rings, and I was a month away from moving to Los Angeles because I did get accepted to UCLA. Um, my phone rings. It's Gene, and he starts off with this thing of. Hi, Paul. This is Gene Peralt with Hush. I said, oh, hey, Gene, how you doing? I haven't talked to you for a while. Um, he said, uh, he said, so, um, so how do you think you did? And I said, well, it's been four or five months. Um, I, I figured, you know, I, I thought I did okay, but I know you interviewed a lot. Of, I know you uh, auditioned a lot of people. So, um, you know, I've got these other plans. And he said, well, do you want to be in the band? And that totally shook me. And I said, oh. well, well, yeah. And he goes, okay, well, you're in. <laughs> and Just and like says, that. <laughs> he says, and you've got 35 songs to learn. Um, your, first, your first gig is in two weeks. And so I said, oh, okay. Um, so I had to go tell my parents, um, hey, uh, I'm not going to UCLA. <laughs> How'd they feel about that? Um, they were they were disappointed, but my parents were always the type of people that it was always about what makes you happy, not necessarily about what they want and expect of you. Um, so like you know, it was they were I had great parents. That's wonderful. I, I think that's a great way to raise your kids. Just let them <laughs> be them. But I was really quite blown away because Robert had you know, when I showed up for that audition, he had like a, a Hammond B3, a Mellotron, a Mini Moog. I thought, holy cow, this is like Rick Wakeman or Keith Emerson here. It's a, there it's you like, go. <laughs> um, so I thought, well, this, you know, this band, this, you know, the musicianship in the band was really great. And I was really kind of uh, humbled to be, have been asked to join that band. Sure. And I stayed with them for about eight years. And, until they broke up. So. And then you moved on? Then I moved on. Uh, the band broke up. Robert decided he wanted to kind of do a solo project. And he put together what he called the Robert Berry Band. And he had asked myself and the keyboard player to join that band. At that time, Robert had switched from um, keyboards to guitars. So this the Robert Berry Band was two guitars, bass, drums, and keyboards. Um, and then later on, that band evolved into, um, Robert decided he wanted to play bass and be the front man with a bass. So we got another guitar player, uh, the bass player left, and we got a different drummer. So it was the same instrumentation, but different people. <laughs> and then then he went off and uh, uh, he, he did his thing in England where he met Steve Howe and met Keith and Carl, and he ended up with the three band. And uh, I'll try to be brief with this. You know, at, at that point, he was gone for, you know, up to two years. And so I was, I was like, 
playing with some people around the area. Um, I got invited to play in a blues band for six weeks. Um, their guitar player had gone off to do a tour. He was going to come back, so this was temporary. That was totally fun. Um, but then one day I was uh, I was home. I came home and there was a message on my machine that said, "Hey, Paul, this is Robert. Um, you know, I'm going to give you a call. Told me the time." And when he when he called me back, he said. Um, Hey, this band I'm in now called Three, we're going to do a tour next year. And he said, I, you know, I think I can probably put you in as the guitar player for that tour. And I thought, oh, that'd be great. Um, and, and with Keith Emerson and Carl Palmer. Oh, my goodness. Exactly. So he sent me the material and I worked on the material for a couple of months to make sure everything was polished by the time I met Keith and Carl so that when we started rehearsing, it wasn't like I was totally unprepared. Mm -hmm. And we did that tour. It was uh, 45, 46 uh, dates across a two month period. And um, and that was kind of it. Um, and then, you, you know, Robert's probably told the story that band broke up. And since then, he's kind of been doing a lot of other things and um, occasionally he'll ask me to do one thing or the other, uh, but uh, we've kind of gone separate directions. I've, I've ended up um, probably over the last 10 or 15 years, I've played in a number of different, different bands, whether they be event bands where you're playing top 40 stuff or whether um, I, I got asked to join this band called Fossil Bay Area, yes. um, which we play we play music that we like. We don't really care what other people think. It's like- I love that. <laughs> we're, we're old enough to where, if we're, gonna, if we're gonna do this, if we're gonna spend our time doing this, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna learn Brick House. We're gonna learn, uh, we're gonna learn Tom Sawyer, um, so. I love it. You know what, I would come see Fossil Bay Area in a heartbeat just because of that. <laughs> it's they're they're a, they're a good group of guys. And where do they play? They're playing now, right? Yeah, we play out um you know six to twelve times a year. Um, we usually play at a at a club called the Cats, uh, which is kind of a restaurant uh, bar in Los Gatos. Mm -hmm. uh, and then every once in a while, we'll get asked to play an outdoor thing for like the city of Saratoga. We'll be putting on a, a spring concert or something. Um, and, uh, but no, we don't, we, don't, we don't get a tremendous amount of gigs because we don't play the stuff that everybody wants to hear, but- um, Well, not everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're happy. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And um, do you advertise for these? I mean, is it something that people can go to a website or something to see when you're going, Fossil's going to play? Yeah, there's a Facebook group called Fossil Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we announce all our, all our dates on that. Um, and uh, I think our next one is like May 26th or something. We had one a couple of weeks back. Um, a couple of people were on vacation most of the month of April, so we didn't. We're not doing anything. Okay, um, so that's where people can go. Yes. Go get pick up a ticket or just know where to go for. Just know where to go. Most of the places we play, it's it, there's no cover charge. Oh, wonderful. Uh, and we don't even we don't even put out a tip jar. We're it's 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 not about the money. It's just about you know, playing the music. Playing the music. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let me see what else I have here on the agenda. Um, now let's see. I think that um, how many years have you been playing with Robert? Um, you know, on and off, we started we started our musical journey or whatever, probably in 1974. And uh, up until last year, the last thing we did, we did the 3.2 band did a few shows in in um, 
April of last year. In, yes. Including Rosfest in Florida, which was mm -hmm. just a beautiful venue. Oh, yeah. Um, and Prague Stock. And Prague Stock, that was in 2019. Yeah. Yes. Prague Stock, you know, that was a big deal. That was a really big deal. Yeah, you know? a nice um, event. I mean, I had the DVD and CD, and I just love it. Uh, you're, 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 you're on point with that guitar. And, oh, thank you. And I have to say this. You make sounds like they are just bursting with sound. And you're sitting there so calm, just, you know, flecking away. And yet this sound is just amazing. And I don't know how you are able to stand so still. I have to move all over the place if that were me. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very old school. I grew up in the, in the days of, you know, Jeff Beck and Eric Clapton and, and Jimi Hendrix and, you know, Steve Howe. So I wasn't, I wasn't learning guitar when a lot of the younger guys were learning guitar, which had, had been during the eighties when, when the, the guitar um, paradigm just completely changed with Eddie Van Halen and Randy Rhodes and, and George uh, Lynch from Dokken, all these people that were playing stuff that at that point, I wasn't really capable of, of playing like that. You know, um, but yet a lot of the younger guys that I hang out with now, they do know those chops and they they play them phenomenally well. well but I, so I'm a great admirer of of yeah I I'm not one of those guys that says you know oh the music today sucks I don't I don't think any music today sucks I mean yeah there's stuff that I'll change the channel on if I'm listening to. Yeah. But everybody out there is is putting out an effort to express themselves. And so True. when I hear somebody like John Mayer play, um, he just I've seen him three times and he kind of blew my mind every time. But and then there's phenomenal new guitar players like um, Paul Bielitrix from the ELP Legacy Band and uh, uh, Matteo Mancuso, who's making a name for himself now, he's got an amazingly complex right hand style where he doesn't use a pick. I mean, Jeff Beck stopped using a pick a while ago, but Matteo has a completely different approach. He's it's almost like he's playing Alan Holdsworth type stuff with a classical style right hand. It's it's very it's very weird. So I love that. It's great to listen to that stuff, but you can only, you know, when I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like, oh, I'm such an old man, but you know, <laughs> when you reach a certain point of your life, you realize that, well, that I can't spend my time trying to do that because there's just not enough time, and. <laughs> And my hands just yeah. don't do that sort of thing. So okay. I, I, we're we're all in the same boat. I mean, we all grew up in the same time period, and we're all kind of struggle now to just kind of do as much as we can do, and just be satisfied with that, and not try to do everything like we used to be able to do. Yes, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I got to say, your style of playing, you know, you talk about other styles, and I find your style to be just uh, something that I, I don't take my eyes off of. Um, just watching how you're playing, especially when I've seen you in, in person with 3.2, and you just play these, these licks and whatnot just so fabulous on just my husband and he came that one time and uh he was he and i we were talking and, and about uh how good you, you you sound you just sound so great well thank you and I, you're a great guy to talk to too great really great guy to talk to totally okay. I, I have a i have a friend um this italian guy that i've known for years and uh 
every year he would have a, a block party at his house up in Palo Alto. And this one time I, I went up to his block party and he, he had me sit in on a couple, he, he has a neighborhood band and, and none of them are, are, you know, like exceptionally great, but they just all enjoy playing. Um, so he had me sit in on a song and had me play a solo, but I guess he recorded it and he took it to his guitar teacher and he said, I want you to teach me to play this solo. And, you know, it was a totally improvised solo at the time. I didn't know what I was doing. And so his guitar player, his guitar teacher ended up transcribing, transcribing the solo. And he said, whoever played this is, has a really weird style. <laughs> um, and that, so I don't know if that's considered, I don't know if that's considered good feedback or bad feedback. I'm perfectly okay with, with having a weird style. You know uh, what though? I think that um, having a different style, as you've mentioned with other musicians can be very favorable to watch. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing. I think it might be a very good thing. <laughs> so, um, I will mention a couple years ago, this group of guys that I met um, at, a, at a fossil show asked me, you know, they said, we have this uh, prog band we call Mind Furniture, and we're in the middle of, of writing songs for our, our next record, and, you know, would you like to play on a couple of songs? And so I said, yeah, sure, that sounds great. So I, uh, I went up to their house a few times, and I kind of went through and learned some of the songs. And so on their latest record, I play three songs. Um, and, uh, you know, after one of them, I will say there was, it's a very, very long guitar solo section and it's all in 11, eight. And I sat down that day and I was having so much trouble kind of, um, phrasing, you know, 11, eight passages and, um, I think I spent like five hours and he kept recording stuff and recording stuff. And I, I think I said, you know, I need to go back to the house and kind of work on this. Uh, uh, so, so as not to waste anybody's time. Um, anyway, uh, they ended up, they ended up uh, releasing the record. And when I, when they sent me a copy, I guess he'd just taken bits and pieces of what I did and strung them all together in a more orderly fashion. Um, I thought that was pretty inventive. I still feel like I let them down, but um, ultimately it was, it was, it sounds okay. But um, well, it must be successful, you know, if he was able to put all that into the right pieces, you know, in the yeah. right places. But the thing that was really outstanding about that project was that there's a local guitar player who now lives in LA, his name is Stan Cody. And um, he's played in a number of bands as well. And I think he's a engineering guy at, at uh, Fender Amps now. But um, Stan played on three songs as well. And I thought it was really cool that after all these years, the two of us were able to be on the same project together. Um, That's very cool. That's very cool. Now, I've got time for one more question. Okay. So I want to ask you, you've done a lot of touring. Is there anything that you can tell us that's gone, say, awry on your tour or crazy or unexpected that we would enjoy hearing? Um, well, I'm putting you on the spot, I know. <laughs> Let's just say way back in the days of Hush, and I'll be completely honest here, um, we had played a couple of shows in North Dakota and we had about 36 hours to get back to California, um, pack our stuff and then hop on a plane because we were going to go play at some dive bar in Hawaii for five or six weeks. So nice. we ended the show in North Dakota, we packed up our truck and we started booking it to the West Coast. 
And um, at one point, somebody said, Paul, can you take a shift driving? So I took a shift driving and I'm driving for like six hours and stopped for gas. And I was driving the van and there was another guy driving the truck and I, I'm the guy driving the truck says, how are you doing? I said, I, I don't know, I'm starting to get tired, but I don't want to wake these guys up because they're sleeping so sound. And he goes, here, try one of these. And he gave me a white, which I guess the truck drivers do. And so I took the white and sure, I drove without falling asleep, but I couldn't sleep for four days. <laughs> So that that totally went awry. I never did that ever again. Um, I just love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll just save these guys a little bit more Z time. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Well, um, I want to thank you, Paul. Paul Keller yep. of Hush 3.2 and Fossil Bay Area for joining us today and talking to us all. And I really, really appreciate from the bottom of my heart, Paul, taking that time today to, to talk with me. Thank you. I Can I can I say one more thing? Absolutely. Okay, I, I need to give a shout out because there's another project I've been involved in um, recently. It's called The Bro Show. Um, oh, yes. We play four or five times a month. And it's a great group of guys. It's interchangeable parts. There's three different bass players, two different drummers, three different guitar players. And so um, it's all led by this young man named Simon Santiago. And uh, he basically has to keep track of who's available whenever. So if, if, if uh, Chris, the bass player, isn't available, he'll call Dave or Josh, the other bass player, to see if they're available. But they're a really fun group of guys, and uh, they play a ton of times, and uh, they've been kind enough to let me sit in with them, you know, four or five times a month, so. Oh, that's fabulous. Now, where can people go to get more information on this show? Um, there's a Facebook group also called uh, The Bro Show, and it's spelled B-R-E-A-U-X. Um, to make it sound French, I guess. Um, ah, oui, oui. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, they play all over the place. Uh, San Pedro Square Marketplace. They play sometimes at the Cats. They play at this place on the beat on the coast called the Davenport Roadhouse. Uh, the, he gets he's he's quite a go getter. He he gets a whole ton of ton of gigs. So um, I'm I'm just proud to uh, have been asked. So. That's fabulous. Well, I hope people go and check out the Bro Show and um, also Fossil Bay Area. And um, of course, um, we love to see you, Paul, wherever you're going to play. Check out Paul's Facebook. I'm sure that you uh, let people know when you're going to play somewhere. Yeah. Perfect. I, I usually post something. So. All right. <laughs> Paul Thank Keller. You, Paul Keller of Hush 3.2 and Fossil Bay Area, I want to thank you so much for your time. An excellent lead guitarist. Very enjoyable talking with you. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you, Diane. Take care. Take care, too. Bye-bye.